Hey guys, I'm Ozzy Vale, and I do daily football manager content. So if that's something that uh, is interest of you, make sure you are hitting subscribe. But today we're going to be looking at how to set up a, a scouting network in the new FM uh, FM23, of course. So this is basically your your overview screen of uh, on the scouting page. Uh, obviously, it's down the side here if you are brand new to the game and. Well, it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a neat. It's it, it gives you an idea of what's uh, going on. You can see here the uh, recruitment focuses that we have, and uh, then you can see here that the play recommendations. Now, you don't necessarily have to go through them in this way, uh, because if you do go over to the scouting center, this is sort of. Uh, the old uh, like there's been in previous editions just the general scouting card gives you a rough idea if you can see it behind my head here of uh, of what the scouts think of the player. Now, one thing I would say is don't necessarily take this as as the be-all and end-all. You know, it, 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 it's not an A-rated signing or that the star ratings aren't particularly good. I think what you want to make sure you're doing is, is going in and actually having a look at the player's attributes. If they're, if if, if you'd like the look of the player yourself, then go ahead and sign them. You know, scouts, it's just their opinion. So, yeah, just the star ratings and the, and, the, and the actual grade rating, now, they take into account a lot of things other than just... Uh, you know, the actual attributes of the player, like, you know, how likely they are to sign for you, their age compared to uh, what the board are looking to sign, sort of an age profile, you know, wages, transfer fee, it's sort of taking all that into account to give you an overall uh, an overall look at, you know, so if it's A signing all, all the way through to a, a, a D, it doesn't go any lower than a D, it might even go down to E and F. Uh, the star ratings, particularly for potential, are a good guide, but again, if you like what you see, you know, just go and sign the player. Don't worry so much about what the scouts think. And if you do want to see instead of the card, the old uh, what like there was on the previous screen, you can just click uh, up here between cards and list, and that will uh, that'll obviously let you know. Personally, I prefer to look at the card than the list, but that's just me. Uh, so that is that sort of just an overview of uh, of all the players that are currently being scouted. The player screen here. Now, this is I, something that I don't use. I like to let the the scouting department find players for me. I find it a little bit more realistic than just going in and generally searching for players. Uh, if you do like to do this, you can obviously go up here to the search function, and yeah, everything is here for you. You can search attributes. Uh, no, it's right here. So you would just click pick. You can highlight the key roles for a certain position, and yeah, you can you can go to town on that. So that that's one way to do it. So advanced playmaker on support, it'll highlight the key attributes, and then you can see here the you know if we're looking for uh, players with 15 and all of those. And then if you are wanting to sort of find the best player based on these attributes, then you can just hit up here and it will make all the attributes go up to 16 so that's a good way rather than going through and clicking each individual one uh as i said it's not the way that i like to do things but that's just my pre my preference there's no reason why you can't search like this at all so that is uh that is something that uh that is there and that what might actually make me use this a little bit more is if you go down here to scouted players now that is all the players that you've found that the scouts have found so using my own logic my own rules these players would be fair game to me and it's a good way to see everybody that has been scouted and again you can search by current ability you can search by potential abil ability or you can search by the the grade rating and of, of you know what the scouts think of players so somewhere between the three of them you'll you'll find uh a, a, probably a player that is uh, that is the one that you're looking for but this is, of course, about setting up a scouting network. So let's go and have a look here at recruitment focus. And this is where you do actually now start to set up the, the scouting network. So you can see here the recruitment focuses that we have, uh, all the ones listed there. Now, if you wanted to change something, and the, again, you can see here all the completed ones that we've done as well. This is sort of me, you can see here, just searching for position. Now, the way that you do this, it would be create a recruitment focus. And this brings up, uh, obviously, the, 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 I guess, the scouting mission. Uh, for lack of a better term. So this is where we're going to want to go through things, I believe. So you can search by, you can search for a, posi a particular position inside the, ca the tactic that you're using. You can search between all your tactics as well. So if you want to change up for search in different positions, you can do that. Or you can search for any position anywhere. Now, personally, I would recommend doing this because tact uh, it depends if you're married to your tactic, then just search by uh, you know players in that particular tactic. I like to I like to change the tactic to match the players. So if, I, if there's a player that is currently playing as a left winger and I'm not playing with wingers, I I, I want to sign them and I, I want to look to play with wingers. So that is uh, you know. I would recommend also just not searching for left wingers and goalkeepers in the same search. Just set up two different searches. It'll be less confusing for everybody involved. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's just go with goalkeeper for now. You can see the recruitment name is goalkeeper. Again, you can change that to whatever you want it to be. And you can search for players to, uh, to loan, to transfer, or loan and transfer. Uh, 
again, it's just up to what you want. I would just search for any player. Now, one thing that I would suggest as well, particularly if you're looking for younger players, it doesn't matter what their current ability is. I mean, you can even go all the way down to absolutely nothing because it doesn't matter what you're interested in is potential ability. I would have thought anyway. Uh, the only difference to that is if you're looking for someone to come in and do a position now, if you're sort of in, say, the January window and your starting goalkeeper has broken his leg, then you might want a current ability. You know, you want someone to come in now and do a decent job for you. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter what their current ability is because if you're signing a long-term player for the future, the only thing you're worried about is potential ability. So uh, that's something that I would suggest doing is uh, putting it down, even if you don't want to be completely useless, at least go down so you know there's just no no gold stars, just the potential uh, silver stars or whatever. I'm not quite sure why they're silver at that point. But anyway, that's how you do that. Uh, age difference, I mean, again, it doesn't really matter. I mean, are you going to want to sign a 50-year-old? Probably not, but for shits and giggles, it's probably worse if they find a 50-year-old that's that good. You know, have a look at them. Now, this is the other thing is areas of search. Now, the other uh, thing here you can do is basically you can search anywhere you want competitions now it might be worth scouting youth competitions where you can uh yeah you know you find the, the 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 future stars well before they sort of get picked up by the bigger clubs it usually works out a little bit cheaper and then you can even sell for a profit if that's what you're looking to do uh, if you're a sort of a building team uh but yeah any competition these are sort of the the, the continental competitions uh, and then you can go so you can see here that uh, now these are just the leagues that i have loaded to, to run so if you have more leagues, then you can obviously scout more competitions. Uh, but don't panic. Just because, say, we don't have the Belgian league loaded doesn't mean we can't, can't scout Belgium. We can go over here to Nation, and you can see any nation we want. We could go and we could scout Belgium anyway. Now, I find scouting a nation is a little bit too specific, particularly outside of perhaps Europe or South America. And I find scouting a whole continent is a little bit too broad. What I like to do is, is go in and scout regions, you can see there you can scout a particular part of Africa, a particular a particular part of each country. Uh, so I, I just to say personally, I find that a little bit a little bit easier. Yeah, not quite so not quite so broad. But that again, just a personal preference. You can scout however you want to scout, but that's how you would scout a particular area. But yeah, it's always worth competitions international. And if you have sort of the South American under tw is it under twenty? What's their big under you know, youth tournament uh, or you know youth World Cups? Those sorts of things. It's it's usually worth having a bit of a scout for, to be honest. Uh, but so that is how you would uh, do that. Now the uh, the priority, if it's something that you want. Now, you know, again, goalkeeper's broken his leg, you need someone, top priority, get it done, get it done quickly. A standard is, is as it says, just not necessarily a priority, but, uh, you know, you want to get it done. And ongoing just means they're just going to keep doing it. They'll just continually scout until you tell them to stop. So depending on how many scouts you have, I mean, in an ideal world, you could just have ongoing and you could scout every region of the world <laughs> and just have them doing it ongoing. That's that's the dream, but it's un probably unrealistic. Uh, I would say just um, well, just just play around with it. You know, you'll find what you, you'll find sort of rich rich uh, grounds that you're finding good players. Maybe keep those ongoing and. Yeah, it, it just it just purely comes up to your preference, but that's that's sort of what those three things mean. Assigned scout, assigned um, an assigned analyst. What I usually do is just let let the uh, chief scout send them out. You know, whatever scout he thinks. I try and this guy's a bit rubbish, isn't he? I try and uh, I try and have the best scouts I can anyway, apart from Brian Byrne and. Yeah, so just let just let the, the chief scout do it. It just saves a little bit of time and hassle. But if you really want to get sink your teeth into it, uh, again, you can just go and, and uh, I don't know, oh no, the, so you would have to untick that and then you can assign the scouts that you want to assign. But again, I usually just let the, uh, or just cancel. I just let the chief scout do it. I just find it a little bit easier. Now, the other thing that you can do in terms of position, you don't just have to scout for a goalkeeper. You could scout for a goalkeeper as a goalkeeper or a sweeper keeper or any role. And uh, you can then search also by the proficiency in that position. So whether they're a decent goalkeeper as opposed to a sweeper keeper, I'm assuming, uh, a, a good or very good at that, at that particular role. I would just leave it at any role. To be honest, I wouldn't want to search specifically because you might find a really, really good goalkeeper that's not a sweeper keeper or vice versa. And it might be worth, you know, just changing up a little bit the tactics. Uh, so that is that. I Personally, unless you say you're searching for a particular position that you're in desperate need of, just, uh, you know, any position, don't don't worry about a tactic, just search any position, any role, just find me the best players that you can find me, and that's going to be fine by me. Um, but yeah, you can obviously go a little bit more or a lot more in detail if, uh, if and when you want to. 
So this brings us over now to the scouting assignments. Now you can see here a list of all the scouts that we have. In blue here are the areas that are currently being scouted. So you can see there Scotland, England, Italy. Uh, I think we have the championship as well. Oh no, that's just going to come under England, is it? which makes sense because that's where the championship is played. And also there's a, a guy looking at the next opposition and we'll get to how you do that in just a second. Uh, now you're going to hit as well behind my head, I know, but scouting responsibility. Uh, if you want to just let the uh, the chief scout assign the scouts, you can. That, that's how you do that. Or you can take control. If you do that, I'm in control. Delegate, he's in control. And uh, that is providing scouting feedback. You can't take control of that. It's just a matter of who you want to uh, to give you the feedback. And then uh, handling scout me uh, scout meetings. Again, I, I do that, but you can assign that to somebody else if you want to as well. Uh, now, if we go over here to world knowledge, this is where you get an idea of, of what areas of the world you have scouted. So you can see... Typically, Northern Europe, uh, the UK, North America, we've got quite well. And everybody else is a little bit sporadic, but it's not too bad. And if you want to have a look at a little bit more detail, you can just toggle down to nations and then you can see the nations specifically. I'm assuming the reason that Australia and New Zealand has even scouted a little bit is because I'm in the game as Australian. So it probably just assumes that I have knowledge of it, which to be honest, I don't. So <laughs> uh, there we go. But that is that is that is how you sort of see how much of the of this world you are scouting now your scouting range is kind of related to this as well if we click up here now this is the how much you're paying you know you have your scouting budget for the year now this is something that you just want to be a little bit cautious of now i'm playing as aston villa premier league team i can scout the world because i have money to burn and i can pretty much you know do whatever i want but if you were say uh you know a smaller team in in the uk if you were i don't know random league one team say i don't know it's lincoln in league one then you're unlikely to be able to sign players, which reminds me of something actually, but you're unlikely to be able to sign players that can't get a work permit. So there's no point really even sc scouting Europe. You're better off just saving the money. And I mean, a League One club, whether they could afford it or not anyway, is of course a bit debatable. But, you know, you might just want to scout UK and Ireland players that aren't going to need permits, work permits. So you just got to be a little bit realistic in thinking of... Uh, Yes, I could find the next Messi in in you know deepest darkest Africa, but if you can't get him a work permit, there's no point. So yeah, just just be aware of the work permit rules of of your league, and I'll show you those momentarily, and and just make sure that you're not wasting money on scouting, finding players that even if you find them, you can't sign them anyway. Now, if you want to find out your work permit rules, go to competitions, click on your league here, and go up to rules. And then it'll be listed uh, down here on the side. It'll be a work permit section, transfers, registrations. Uh, we'll find there it is there, work permit rules. So every competition will have that there. So you'll be able to sort of work out. This can be very, very complicated, but you'll be able to get an idea anyway of what, uh, what the work permit uh, situation is in the league that you're playing in. Which brings me back to <laughs> recruitment focus here and something that I forgot to mention. If you go over here to further details, uh, if we just bring up a position, uh, further details. Now, this allows you to scout a little bit more in depth. Now, personally, I don't necessarily want to play around with this, but coming back to uh, there's no point scouting players you can't sign, you might just want to scout players uh, with a, that have a work permit chance, so work permit likely uh, or work permit exempt. So if you want to do both, you could do that, and then you could add another uh, work permit chance, and you can change that to... So you don't need to change it. You just leave it as, as work permit is exempt, work permit is likely. There used to be an or. Excuse me. I believe that will just find players that are work permit exempt or work permit is likely. You may just want to do two separate things there because I'm not a hundred percent sure how that's going to work in the new game. So apologies for that. But yeah, that is uh, that's that's one thing you might want to do. The other way around that is if you search nationality. Now nationality is different to national team because you could have a nationality of English. But like, look at at Saha, or but be playing for Ivory Coast. But just because you have that English passport, you wouldn't need the work permit to play in England. So you could do that. Um, you know, what? Or if you are signing, if you're playing sort of in in the EU, obviously you can just you could just search for an EU national. Or again, you can go sort of through. Uh, each individual country or again you can you can do it by the regions so yeah that is that that is the sort of the two things i think that that you could want to search for to sort of wait not not get players rec oh the other one actually is well world reputation if you are sorry if you're at a club and they want to sign high reputation players i mean mls is probably the league that you're going to see that in most but you'll find it anywhere uh again you can look here you know the, the world reputation and sort of 
good or very good or above or you know whatever whatever level it is that you were that you're wanting uh, at least as a minimum i should say you can go at most as well but why you'd want to sign somebody that is lesser of a world reputation i'm not quite sure uh but yeah anyway that's that's how you would do that as well so those are sort of the three things i would imagine work permits nationality and uh, and a world reputation but everything else is there if there's if there's a reason you want to find something else there somebody else then you could go for it. i mean language spoken might be a useful one if you want someone to come in and not have to not have to have a, a language course and be able to sort of fit in more regularly or more easily in instantly then language spoken might be another one you want to have a look for but yeah that, that these are uh, those are all the options there for searching as well uh, now scouting priorities this is uh i did so i skip over this this is sort of the, the order in which things are being scouted if you want to uh, move things around drop and drag that's how you do it so easy really uh so this goes back now to scouting coverage we'll pick up where we left off here now match and team analysis now, I always have someone scouting the next opposition. I find it very useful. Uh, and then that will then lead into the data hub and, and sort of preparing tactics for the game. If you want to scout up a, a specific game, now this is games that are not involving you. You can see there, there's all the, all the games that are taking place. Uh, so you can obviously do that there and just hit attend or scout match. Uh, it, attend, I think that means you get to watch it. Uh, and then obviously a scout match you can you can assign a scout or just whoever is the sort of next available scout can do it uh specific team now the only reason i think you would want to do this is for a future uh so say you you know a future cup tie or a future european fixture something like that you might want to, to scout a team in advance to be honest i just do next opposition but if you do want to be super prepared for uh, for an upcoming fixture then that, that would be the way that you would do that as well uh, and then you go down to team report priorities i'm not currently looking to scout any teams but if you if you were this would be where you do the same sort of drop and drag thing as you had on the player uh, scouting uh, priorities as well so that is that and then you go over to your short list and this is all the players that you're keeping an eye on now one thing i would recommend with this is keeping this box ticked so that means that they will the scouting reports will keep updating you won't get stuck with a scouting report that's sort of a year and a half two years old and you don't want to sign a player that is either starting to degrade maybe they've had an injury and their potential isn't what it was uh, i always think it's worth just keeping that uh, keeping that box ticked and making sure things are staying up to date uh you could of course you can have uh, tr transfer loan i typically i would not have them ticked at the same time but those are players that are interested in signing for you and with then all your transfer all your uh, scout shortlisted players are there if you just untick both but uh, yeah that is uh, that is how you would do that so that is the scouting uh, section. That is how you set up a scouting network. And if you want to see a little bit more on the uh, process of signing players, then um, why not come and join me as we look at how to structure a transfer deal? Take care.